I could eat this a lot for many days and I don't think I would get bored of it. Hi, I'm Beryl and the theme for today's video is pancakes. And I believe that there might be a bit of disagreement in the comments when it comes semantically to what a pancake is. Because to be honest, almost all of these recipes are technically crepes. However, I said to everybody, I would like pancake recipes and these all came in. So I think that we all understand that they're kind of the same thing. Although technically a pancake has a leavening agent, whereas a crepe does not. But now that that's out of the way, I hope that we can enjoy this episode about pancakes crepes. <laughs> Hi, Verlin friends. My name is Julie. I am from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm here to share panquecas de carne with you, which translates to meat pancakes. Panquecas de carne are savory pancakes that are rolled up crepes with bolognese sauce. I think that this dish is unique because even though we're probably not the only country that has some sort of meat pancake, it still represents a lot of what Brazilian culture is, which is a mix of things that were brought together by a lot of people that came from many places in the world. I love the simplicity and flexibility of this dish because these pancakes only use a few ingredients and these are ingredients that you can find anywhere. Being able to make something so delicious with ingredients that are economically accessible is very important in a country like ours, which has a lot of crisis and a lot of social inequity, so it's really a dish that is for everyone. Ground meat is very expensive in the country right now, so you can do it with chicken too. A lot of people do vegetable ones, so you can do whatever you want. It reminds me of my family and specifically my mom because she makes the best panqueca de carne you will ever, ever have. I love that most Brazilians watching have probably had it and it's not a dish that it's internationally famous and that's why i wanted to share it with you because it feels like a secret that everyone needs to experience <laughs> for once at least enjoy as we say in portuguese bon appetit all right we've got panquecas de carne from brazil i feel like this is some sort of like enchilada meets pancake and I, I'm very excited by it. Very excited by it. I feel like I can't necessarily tell that I'm eating a pancake, but it's good. This is definitely a really interesting presentation. I never thought about using pancakes like as a wrapper. I guess I've always th seen them as something that, that stands on its own. But this is really fun. Like the theme of the video, you know, these are savory pancakes, so they're pairing really well with the meat. Mmm. I could eat this a lot for many days, and I don't think I would get bored of it. It's like a hamburger meets a pancake meets an enchilada. The artist today, her name is Ana Maria Lozano. She is from Bogota, Colombia. She draws a lot of inspiration from sport and from architecture. I'm very drawn to the colors. I'm leaving a link in the description so you can support her work. Is there anything else I wanna say about this pancake? I would definitely recommend making it. I think it's simple, it's delicious. It would definitely be a crowd pleaser. And it feels like something you may have had before, but at the same time, it's different. So if you're nervous to get outside of your food box, this would be a really good dish to do that with. And if you're not nervous, it just tastes good. Hi, I'm Emeline, I'm French. I live in Nantes in Brittany, which is the western part of France. I'm going to tell you about Get It. There's a savory kind of crepes and the dough is made out of buckwheat flour, salt, water and uh, if you are feeling fancy, an egg. It comes with many toppings, although the main ones would be a galette complète, which is a sunny side egg, a slice of ham, shredded cheese and a lot of salted butter on top. There are 
different from crepes. Crepe dough is very rich and thick. Although you wouldn't typically eat sweet things in a guet, I can only recommend it. It's still very delicious. Also, traditionally, you would drink hard cider with it and eat a crepe as a dessert. Galettes and crepes are the very heart of Britain food and although I know that crepes are very popular in other parts of France, I'm not sure that galettes get eaten in other regions. Here you can get them everywhere. Frankly, it's just home. I grew up with it. It's Sunday night dinners when my parents didn't feel like cooking. It's me living abroad and <laughs> being homesick and making get it from scratch because it's quick, easy and it's comforting. And people should try them because, frankly, I have never met someone who told me they didn't like get it. <laughs> that was just like, I felt like making this was drama. Between messing up multiple times. Oh no, no, this is brutal. My fire alarm went off. No! Project, get the towel! I don't think that I truly did this dish justice, but I also like completed it. It tastes really nice. It's savory and it's salty from the cheese and the ham. The buckwheat crepe is good. Like it might not look the way it's supposed to look, but it tastes fine. It tastes good. When I worked at Great Big Story, I traveled to France and met with the Brotherhood of the Galette. This is some footage from the documentary that I shot there. So I know the importance of the little craters when you make the galette, which I just, I couldn't get it. It said to keep the pan hot enough so it sputtered, but when I did that, it just like wouldn't spread and, you know. I don't want the French stereotype to be true that French cooking is just hard to do, but like, I am zero for two. This was so hard to make. The bread has no structural integrity. I imagine some of you will be commenting that I've been using my hands to flip a lot of these pancakes. And the reason for that is, first of all, I only have this one spatula that is truly garbage. Wait, actually, here's a bigger question. When I say spatula, what do you think of? Because I think that both of these are spatulas. But also when I said I was using a spatula to flip it, maybe you knew what I meant. If any of you know the correct answer, please let me know. Ta-da! Clean plate club. <laughs> okay. Before we get to the next dish, let's talk about Boksu. Boksu is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box. The theme of the box this month is Sakura, which is the Japanese cherry blossom. So a lot of the foods have flavors that are reminiscent of that sentiment and the blossom itself. I love working with Boksu because getting these snacks every month is honestly such a fun treat. There are so many interesting things in here from savory to sweet, things that I would probably never think to try on my own. It's really nice to have somebody curate an experience for you. I really wanna try this jelly. There is a full flower in this. It's like floral jello. Honestly, it's appealing. I like it. So if you'd like to try books yourself and support my channel, use my code BARREL15 to get $15 off your first order. Okay, let's get back to the pancakes. I'm Dave and I live in Philadelphia in the USA. One of my favorite pancake dishes is scripelle limbusse, thin crepes rolled up with grated cheese and served in hot broth as a first course. It's a specialty of the Abruzzo region in Italy and more specifically the province of Teramo, where my grandfather was born. Crepes, crespelle in Italian or scripelle in the Abruzzese dialect, are commonly used in savory Italian dishes. You can make lasagna with crispelle or manicotti and so on. This recipe is known in the Abruzzese immigrant community here in the U.S., but virtually unknown outside it. Even other Italian Americans have rarely heard of it or eaten it. My grandmother, who was not Abruzzese, learned to make scripelle and busse from her mother-in-law, my great-grandmother, and my 90-year-old mother, 
still makes them to this day. She enjoys making them not only for the family, but for dinner guests, who always love them. They're a real special treat. Skripel and Busse evoke wonderful memories of family dinners and connect us to our Abruzze's family who still live and thrive in the province where my grandfather and grandparents were born and who immigrated to this country over a century ago. You will find Skripel and Busse on restaurant menus in the Teremo province. You should try Skripel and Busse because they're easy to make, but also because they're warming and satisfying and your family and friends will love them. I filled this up way too close to the brim. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm just gonna have some of the broth. Okay, that's safer. I'm very excited for this dish. I think I like the simplicity of it, but also it's very different to me. I've never seen this before. I've never heard of this. Come here, creepy crepe. Mmm. Mmm. Whoa. There is something so comforting about this. I also think that if you have a family and you have kids and you want to introduce them to new foods, this would be really fun because it's almost like pancakes for dinner, but they're getting to try something new from a different culture and they can learn about it. I mean, same for adults. I think that I could have been a little more heavy handed on the Parmesan cheese, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Dave, I think you did such a wonderful job talking to all of us about this dish. I, you, like, it just got me excited immediately because it felt a little bit like a family recipe that was being shared with all of us. So that was really awesome, thank you. Hi, I am Naziha and I am from Singapore. I have some Indian as well as Malay blood, so I am lucky to eat food from both cultures. For today, I would like to share about roti kirai, which is also known as roti jalo or even roti ranges in certain parts of Malaysia. It refers to the circular motion when pouring the batter onto the pan itself. Roti kirai is made of a thin batter, often dyed yellow using turmeric or even food colouring. The batter is poured onto the pan such that there are many tiny holes in it, it makes it look like a lace doily. They are often served with chicken curry as well as in my household, we serve it with an egg salad that has a peanut sauce, which is really nice. It's actually quite hard to make the perfect kirai. So an accomplishment that I am personally proud of is making kirai on two different pans at the same time. And you can call me a pro kirai if you like to. I think roti kirai is representative of the Malay culture how such simple ingredients can create beautiful dishes because these ingredients are a staple in a Malay household. I believe that in the past, they really stretched the potential of each ingredient that we have. And this just shows us that flour, coconut, cream and egg can make such a fancy dish and is sometimes even served at weddings just to impress people. When I think of roti jala or roti kirai, it really just screams family to me. It really brings me back to the times where my siblings and I would compete to impress my mother to make the best kirai that we have. It also holds the significance of being the first dish that my mom has entrusted me to make on my own without the supervision and I think that is a pretty big accomplishment. I hope that one day I can pass on roti kirai making as a tradition in my own family. Wow, this was a fabulous experience and they are so beautiful. I really hope that the camera picked up the delicacy and just like the specialness of the visual presentation of these pancakes because woo wee, I like ye. These are curried potatoes that I had left over in my fridge. Oh. I need to try the pancake on its own. You can taste the turmeric. I can't really taste the coconut milk. They are very fluffy. Very, very light. Very cool. I'm very into this. Love the color. 
I like the mouth feel of it. It just, it feels light. I was very proud of myself when I was making these about my ingenuity in using the turkey baster. So traditionally there is a tool and the tool looks like this. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I can find it. And I found one on eBay that was like 10 bucks and it was gonna take 35 days to ship. So I was like, mm, maybe not. Then I had this idea that I would use my old salad dressing bottle and stab holes in the cap to make like a squeezy thing. The plastic on the cap of that dressing bottle was fortified like a dense brick wall. I mean, I don't know why salad dressing caps need to have such thick plastic, but okay. And that's when I saw my turkey baster. Worked like a dream. Gosh, I like really like this. The texture is just so light and, did I say that they were light? It feels light, very, very light. <laughs> you really do get the sense that you're eating a pancake. I mean, I, I just, I love it. Hello everyone, I am Dina, I am from Palestine, but I live in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah. The dish I would like to share with you today is called Magla. It's a traditional kind of pancake from Palestine. It's a very thin kind of crepe-like pancake that is made of very simple ingredients, which are water, flour, and eggs, and a lot of olive oil. It's commonly enjoyed as a food for nourishing uh, people who are sick or after giving birth they give it to the mother so it fuels her properly and give her enough fuel to be able to feed her child. I love this dish so much because it reminds me of my grandma she loves to make it all the time even if it's not on an occasion because she knows we love it. Sadly, this dish is not very common nowadays because it's like a tradition and people are not really doing it so much these days. So I wish by sharing it with you today, it will be able to be more visible in our society. It's a very easy dish. I hope you can all make it and try it since the ingredients are accessible to everyone. Enjoy! So this is our pancake from Palestine. I'm very interested to try this. It's very eggy compared to the others that I have made. Ooh. I also wanted to mention that we didn't see Dina's face because she wasn't comfortable having her face on the internet, but she wanted to share this recipe with everybody. So I thought, yeah, like we can try it that way too. I'm curious how you guys feel. Let me know. It's almost got like um, like very, very thin omelet vibes, which is interesting. Anything with za'atar, I just absolutely love. I think it tastes so good with almost anything. My only gripe with these pancakes is that they feel a little dry because in essence, there's really nothing on these except for a little bit of za'atar on top. I would add some butter or maybe a little bit more olive oil, just a little bit more fat, I think. The consistency of these is really lovely. It's not as delicate as some of the others that I've made. And because of that, it felt like harder to mess up, if that makes sense. I think this is also the first dish that we have had from Palestine. So that's very exciting. Thank you, Dina, for sharing it with us. I'm curious which of these you might try at home. Let me know and I will see you in my next video.